Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Keeping It Spiritually Simple. And today we're going to talk about the energetics of where we are in our place, our space, our time continuum, wherever we are in the universe, where the soles of our feet meet the earth. And there's a lot going on. And you may see it throughout this video because, as I've said on a few other videos recently, we're getting a lot of internet glitching, a lot of... Uh, your camera, your phone doing its own thing, and you're not even hitting a button. It's already happening here on the beginning of this video. So you know what? We're just going to go with the flow. If something freezes, we're just going to sit here and just keep doing it till we come to the end. But right now with the energetics, we want to talk about what we're kind of experiencing right now. And when we think we get to the top of the mountain of energetic climaxes, the ceiling seems to get raised even higher. And I know for me, I'm experiencing being very thirsty. One minute, I'm very alert, and ready to go. The next minute, I want to crash and burn. I feel like sometimes I want to pack and find the nearest exit. Other times, I just want to go without taking anything with me. And that just means on this adventure of life, not necessarily wanting to exit, but that nothing here possession-wise means anything to me. It has no real value. It's how I'm operating and tuning my physical, mental, spiritual, emotional vehicle, and then how I'm just kind of working through the waterways of, of that in my pathways, and how do I incorporate that into my, my daytime and being conscious letting go of the old programming that occasionally sneaks up. And then you realize, oh, wait a second. It's just like putting your phone down. You walk away and you have no clue where you just were or where you set it down. This morning, I seem to have banging my left foot onto everything. And I was like, okay, let me physically balance myself because something's happening there. So ladies, what are you all experiencing right now? And I think Kelly will start with you because I know Elizabeth has a whole continuum I think she wants to share, yeah, about it. So Kelly, what are you experiencing right now? Hey everybody, Kelly Wagner, publisher, Edge Magazine. Ooh, 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 little plug. Uh, and co-host the Being Curious show. So I just got back from a mountain adventure with the family that we executed beautifully, by the way, you know, when you do those family trips and, you know, I'm not going to call it a vacation because, you know, kids and dogs and family, that's not a vacation. That's a trip with your family, right? We executed, we had to pivot. Um, it was, it was well done, but then there was a lot of the frequencies of, of dealing with family and mountains and all this beautiful things. And since I got home, I have been sleepy. I have been, I love that when you said you've been thirsty because I've also like, here's my multiple beverages for the, just, just for the time that we're together and sleepy and tired and wanting to be barefoot, wanting to be outside, wanting to be grounded. The moon's been looking just amazing, fearful. I have to say, um, last week I sat there. I mean, like I have abundance around me like on, on every level. And I sat there and I was like, I think I want to quit. And I think I want to go get a full-time job. And I just want to go punch the clock and woo. And you have these moments and it's, it's fear, but then I think the work that we're doing, um, on a minute, I was going to say on a daily basis, but it's like on a minute by minute basis, you have that presence. And I, and I go, is this mine or is this the collectives or is this real or is this just a little wash? And it's like with these waves going over me and it's just like all coming in and it, it people are angry. And I mean, even going grocery shopping lately, people are just like this and people on the road. And it's just like, there's all of this going on. And, and for the people like us, and I'm just saying like, like-minded that are, are trying to hold space for people. It's a lot. And I've been, I'm wanting to sleep like this morning I slept in and I, I wanted to roll over and sleep it some more. And I'm not a sleeper. I wake up and I'm ready to go. Give me a little this and give me a little that. And I'm ready to go. And oh goodness, it's just been, it's been a lot. That's mine. 
That's a lot. Elizabeth is collecting her thoughts. Yeah, she is. She's like <laughs> dialing in on it. <laughs> I could totally yeah. relate, Kelly. I do too. It's a lot. And I'm in a different country. And the people here are very earthly. They're very grounded. And they're very heart-centered. So in the United States, in the Western world, you know, there's a lot of, um, you'll notice the energy, especially if you come and you're here for a while and then you go back. Everyone's energy is very out. And the Ecuadorians are not. They're very centered. And they don't, their energy doesn't go out. It goes up and down. Um, but even, even with that going on and the difference in the situation where we're at um, culturally and physically, the, uh, the outcomes are, have also been the same. So that extraordinary thirst we're in this power of the Pisces. Um, it's the last push of the Pisces old world of the of the old paradigm. And the that's why like a lot of the tools that people might have used to manage themselves, it, it's just falling apart. Um, everything from certain emotional processes to that that the average person might have, all of that seems to just be so limited. And you're seeing this ramping up of what seems like a madness. And it's very angry. And of course, underneath that anger is a lot of grief. Um, and people seem to not have any control. They're, they're just absolutely um, out of it. And you're so you're seeing a couple of things going on if from a grander point of view. Personally, yeah, this month has been crap. My daughter, like Kelly's, got her leg really hurt. I don't know how bad your daughter's was, but mine was so bad that, that she couldn't walk at all for two and a half weeks and she had crutches. And then um, my husband and my kids, and uh, they're facing some of their worst fears lately, mm. either through nightmares or through actual events or both. And I'm I'm witnessing that. I'm watching my husband and children have to go through this is very stressful for us who are helping run our families and our households. And, you know, those of us who have a spiritual mindset, we're always trying to kind of keep it together spiritually. And of course the physical, mental and emotional piece is extremely ramped up right now, but why what's going on? Well, I have to say that I like to get bad news first <laughs> so, so i'm gonna tell you the bad news first and then we'll get into the good news bad news first this is not going away this is just the beginning this i knew you were gonna say that and i was like and i still fought it, Dang it. but okay now we're gonna let you embrace it okay <laughs> but why why isn't that going away because well we're at the end of a big cycle and and now you're starting to see it play out. You, you've gotten glimpses of it up till now. Now you're seeing it play out. And the way it plays out is that the electromagnetic field of the earth is disappearing. It's going through what's called an excursion. And it's about 35, 30% gone right now. And so we're peaking up. Here's the galaxy. And the galaxy is got a big thick ring like a donut of matter and and dust and all sorts of cool stuff but we're way out on the edge of the galaxy it takes us about 26,000 years to go through one zodiac so that's two full cycles two 12,000 year cycles to go through one zodiac so the past 24,000 years or 26,000 years, we've gone through two. We're, well, this is the second one. We've already gone through one that was called the Great Deluge 12,000 years ago. We called it the Global Flood, though that's not really exactly what happened. Um, it wasn't really a flood, it was a pole shift. And we're heading towards that. So during this time, the we've been in this particular arena, this dark donut of energy being cut off from galactic light. 
and it's called the Kali Yuga. And now we're coming out of the Kali Yuga and we're going into what's called the Satya Yuga, which is an ascending of our whole solar system, peeking up over that donut to see, to receive that light from the galaxy. Plus, we're having all this very interesting energies from space, some of which we understand, some of which we don't. We don't have the tools to measure everything in the universe. Our periodic table is very, very small in comparison to the truth. But the that peaking up, that peaking up out and getting blasted by all of this new literal, actual light, radiation, etc. What hits, what does that light hit in your body first? Right? Your head. And so we have very good studies come out, especially in the past 10 years, about how this stuff and how solar flares in particular affect the human mind. So what are you seeing? Well, you're, I'm, I call it a great sorting, a sorting of consciousness. Because these folks who are really losing it and they don't have any tools and they're still caught up in that old programming, that nice, uh, very clear matrix programming of what if I just go and do this nine to five stuff and stick with the matrix? Maybe that'll be safer. And we're watching us us who are spiritual, we're watching all that come up from our subconscious. It's It has to do with our deepest fears. What does light do when you turn on the light? It, it reveals stuff. And when you, when you amp that light up, it shows you more and more of the programming and the problems and the pain and the details and the cool stuff and the, and the gifts. It shows you more and more and more. But imagine that light being amped up every day now a whole other notch whereas we we could wait for an entire year before just even last year it took us a whole year to go through this sort of push into a deeper light it was 12 months worth of that light being turned on a little brighter and now it's every month and every week and it's only going to get ramped up faster and faster until there is a every single second of the day seems like an incredibly long period of time time changes when you're in these kinds of pressure and that's exactly what it is it's pressure it's consciousness pressure it creates evolution we're in this period right so that being said august has been very unique because um these two weeks of us not being able to function that well and i'm like kelly like i can get by without sleep i'm a mom and you know and and I haven't been able to get out of bed either. But more than that, my children being sick, all of these dramas of people's fears needing to come out onto the table. And you can't really do much for somebody when they've got to face that stuff. You can hold space for them, but they have to be brave enough to do it themselves. So, you know, those of us who can feel so deeply, that really is um painful and of course you're witnessing the revealing of the pure elite evil of this planet what they're capable of what what they're real willing to do now in front of your face um i'm speaking in regards to maui um and other that is so powerful that you said about what they're doing in front of our face like, right in front of you and it's as you look at it and then you peel it back and you look deeper, you realize, I, I I can't even come to words, but, oh, and by the way, Maui is my sacred space. Maui, I've been going there since I was little. Um, My favorite breakfast is at Longy's on Front Street in, in Lahaina. I, 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 I can't like, yeah, I was, I was married on Island. Like I, I, I just, and what they're coming out with is just, I'm getting, I'm getting just saddened. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interject. I did. Maui is just I'm glad you did. I, don't, I just don't even know what to do. Like it's, and it's so, and, and then I, I just, and the people that have, have showed up and the donation, I, it's just, it, and it's like, it's like Maui, it's Maui. It's, it's Maui. Okay. I'm what done. What people don't realize is why Maui. Tell us um, more. Are you, if you mm -hmm. if you feel oh again I will this is the time right 
Um, but let me wrap up the moon part because we're in between two big moons. Right now we're talking the day before the second full moon of August. August 2023 has been an incredibly powerful time of cleansing. And so my offer to you, for example, is if you're in grief around Maui, like so many are, and, and probably other events as well that are unfolding for many, whether it's personal or not, if you're experiencing the collective, what the elite don't ever suspect is how powerful our collective consciousness really is. And Maui, this this incredible human sacrifice, which is exactly what it was, it was a child sacrifice, um, that is going to literally break open people's psyches. It has. And whoever wasn't awake or willing to step over that line and they were on the fence, it's it's over now. And they always underestimate this. They always underestimate how this is going to affect the psyches of humanity and what the reaction will be because they actually think that we are really that stupid they think that we're cattle they don't they don't think of us the way that we ought to think of ourselves which is um incredibly powerful beings and and that's the that's how they lose this galactic war because this is what you're seeing is the very ends of a galactic war maui was destroyed by weapons from space. I, I know exactly what these weapons are. I know exactly which companies made them. And the Dow Jones just presented an entire documentation on how everyone should be investing in direct energy weapons because it's going to be a huge multi, multi figure trillion billion dollar industry. Um, and they're so excited. Dow Jones is so excited as of July for how how much money direct energy weapons is going to bring to the table. These things are in plain sight. You don't have to look very hard. Um, but what Maui is, is it's broke open the rabbit hole to the bottom. To the bottom. Now, I've already been hanging out at the bottom of the rabbit hole most of my life, so I'm used to it. I'm used to having to face off with things like child sacrifice. But this is super difficult for most humanity. Most humanity is not called to go sit in the bottoms of hell and make sense of it. But I can tell you what to do because I've been down there and I've gone through this process already, some decades already passed. Um, so none of this is surprising to me. It actually doesn't disturb me the same way as it used to because I understand it fully and what's happening but um the what happened in maui was actually predicted already in 2016 there was some very excellent predictive models developed by cliff high out of olympia washington where i'm from and i happen to also be a futurist and do work on predictive models weirdly um but he his predictive models were talking about um they're really specific and they worked with the internet at the time and his predictive model said there's going to be a, an attack on Oceana and Hawaii's part of Oceana. Now, predictive models, you can't pin exactly when certain things are going to happen. Some things end up happening really quickly. Some don't. And so that's a good, you know, eight to 10 year gap from when when it was being planned, because his his model used the full breadth of the internet and all the language on the internet. He's a linguist. So he based his models off of language. All of these things were being planned 10 years ago. And now, now they've had to roll it out for many reasons, mainly, and here's the good news, because we're all figuring it out. Now we are no longer in our ignorance like the Pisces world really was fully in deep ignorance um now we're in the time of aquarius which is literally the aquarian is the galactic wisdom being poured onto the earth that's what that symbol means of the aquarian hold the water bear pouring what all this galactic wisdom galactic knowledge and wisdom 
if you understand that this war that we're in is actually billions of years in the making, and you understand who all these players are and why they want the children, why they want to completely, literally annihilate all of Lahaina, like people on the ground who have actually been to war zones are saying it looks worse than a war zone. Um, and I can't even imagine uh, psychically and energetically what it would look like. When I look at it from afar, I can see very clearly that this was a, a ritual. It and and you always know that when the numbers. It happened on eight eight, but the aerial code eight oh eight. All then eight. What is eight in the numerological sense? It's what comes around goes around. And so they're trying to basically say we're going to sacrifice this is what all of maui was in a nutshell we're going to sacrifice lahaina and everyone in it and especially the children because 2223 children are missing people uh, that just came out from the hawaiian school district of maui so that and then let alone the adults and animals of course no one's going to count them but they said, hey, we're going to sacrifice Lahaina on this day to the to to the entities that we serve. And in this sacrifice, um, we expect to be paid back in full by being able to then own every single inch of that property. And so that's why 24 hours later, immediately people whose homes were burned down didn't even get a chance to shed a tear. They've already got people trying to buy them out and laws being passed under their nose that they have no say over because they don't have any internet. So they can't sign up forms or make any sense of anything. And when the police chief is the coroner against actual Hawaiian Maui law, what do you think is going to happen? So this particular event, they, they, that's why they're not talking about it on the modern news because they don't want you to look at this and and anyone who even dips their toe a little bit into it is now getting activated right and i don't like we're using the word activation ever i'm i'm using it really specifically in a catalyst like chemistry sense this is this is breaking people's hearts open when their hearts were closed before and this is global so it's it's incredible um, and unfortunately, the people of Lahaina and Maui, they are going to have to suffer this. And, and however, again, you, as usual, don't underestimate the Hawaiian culture. That's a, that's a culture of incredible warriorhood. It, it comes from a lineage of the Lemurian lineage. Do not underestimate this. Don't don't underestimate them. They're they're more powerful than they seem. And the islands, why on Maui exactly? Maui is directly across the globe from the pyramids of Egypt. It's on the 30th parallel. Go ahead. Then isn't I'm sorry, I'm crying. Isn't Haleakala the um the heart chakra of the world? Some people say that. Um, there's many ways to perceive the chakras of the planet. Um, I think if you just feel into it, you can feel that's true, right? And um, I don't really think in chakras anymore, really. But the if you just take a look at electromagnetically, even it, right, it's a it, let's like like forget what I said about chakras. The the if anyone's ever been to Maui, that's listening to this. I cry like ugly tears landing. It's like home. I know I've had, I don't know what my connections are to Maui, um, but it's, it's like home. I, I, I go from a Minnesota girl to um, Kamina, like, like that. <laughs> I locals, locals look at me and they're like, you're from here. And I'm like, actually, no, I'm from Minneapolis. It's, it, there's an energy, there's a frequency um, it is just, it's, yeah, I, but the, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to end my little 
because I'm not speaking English right now, but it's just keep going. Well, people need to hear your heart. And what it, you're it, thinking is that it opens the heart. It just, it's just, um, it's in Lahaina. Like, so why Lahaina? Like out of, there's, because the, I was, just feel like there's a broken deal. That was the last deal. stronghold. That was the last stronghold of the native people. Yeah. And the native um, Hawaiian um, royalty, that was the seat, of, that was their throne. Um, that's why. And the banyan tree what's with the banyan tree didn't the banyan tree survive yeah it's also it's lahaina's burned before but not like this right um and most places on the island pele pele cleans house yeah you know? and the people know that this was different um and the people know that um uh, and and yes you'll see these very interesting things um come out of maui there will be these incredible pieces that occur and and you're and right now i'm watching very carefully all the um the voices especially the masculine come and step up to 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 say where the f are the children and and they're not letting up thank god because this is activating the masculine um the sound of freedom movie with jim caviezel that's activated the masculine i've watched all these veterans suddenly get, get into action when they had no purpose in life and now they do um i'm just feeling right now like drumming like this like whispery drumming and and fire like i'm just i'm just it's it's I don't, and I normally don't hear this, but just even our discussion, I'm just, I'm, it's this low, this drumming and this fire. And it's, it's like, it's time, it's time to get, come to the fire, come, come, come in circle, come in ceremony. I, mm -hmm. I'm just getting shivers saying it. It's, it's, it's. Come to the fire. And why do you use fire? Fire is the great dissolver. And we need to put everything of our egos, everything of our spiritual egos, right? And what is that? That's that's me saying, I think I know. I think I know. I've got a huge one. I think I know stuff. Um, and, and then, of course, all the trauma. And anything that blocks our heart, right? Because what are we being asked to do as spiritual warriors, as spiritual healers, as spiritual priestesses, as spiritual mothers and fathers? We're being asked to feel this. You need to feel this. You've got to put everything into the fire that's keeping you and all of your fears, take them from the subconscious, lay them out and let them burn. It's the perfect time to do this before Equinox. Get get a piece of paper, start writing this stuff down and light it up, y'all. Ritual, rituals, how we get stuff done. And what did the Hawaiians do immediately? The morning after, what did they do? They get into ritual, prayer, immediately. Immediately, the grandmothers create a sacred circle, a permanent one, and begin their ceremonies. And Hawaii is in the waters, of course, which means everything that occurs in the Hawaiian Islands is magnified by a thousand times. So this is why this feels like someone just stabbed us all in the heart, um, through the back of the heart. That's exactly what they just did. And will will we survive such a terrible thing? Well, of course, of course we will. Think of this as like, think of it like in in, in the ancient galactic history, many planets were utterly annihilated. Imagine, Imagine being on a on a planet and having refugees show up and you know them saying there's nothing left. There's no planet left. There's nowhere to go. That's what's happening to Lahaina. It's like Lahaina it was or Maui is like a planet and half of it just got bombed into oblivion. Um but more than that just like every part of our wars in in this galaxy the the those the those adversaries that we're up against here and i call them adversaries instead of enemies because not all these races that we're dealing with are actually enemies sometimes they're really just completely uh misinformed and or 
some of them are really on our side and others are not. So you can't just paint a paintbrush over one species and call them all bad. But, you know, a lot of them, they're after our bodies. They're after the body. They're after the blood. They're after our experience. They have not been invited to take part in these incarnations and their promise at the beginning was we will hunt down every single one of you and all of your relatives to the end of time until we have full control over your creation and that is what we're looking at so you know they're after our bodies and if you can understand your body if you can really get into the full experience of your embodiment then you're going to be able to move forward into what what will become there's going to be many more Maui's folks, many, many more. And you are born into this ending, this incredible ending of an age. You came here on purpose because if we're willing to get through this and fully step with our whole body experience to the other side, we will then finally win not only the wars on this planet, but this whole galaxy, that's what's at stake. This is the end all be all. This is it. This is the last battle. This is it. And that's the good news. <laughs> so the good news is we're unstoppable, y'all. We're unstoppable. You can't stop us. This has been billions of years in the making. And we have allies that would blow your mind if you're not already aware of who's on our side. You need to turn around and look at who's backing you up right now. You don't understand who really is willing to, to support us. And if you did, you'd feel a lot more brave because, and that, that's what I want you people to know about. They need to understand galactic history. That's why I'm teaching it over this whole next year and taking a year to do it. So we have to understand this history because if you do, if you do, then all of your past life stuff, all the galactic past life stuff, all the earthly past life stuff, you know, Kelly, you were in Lemuria, Hawaii's part of the Lemurian Empire. You were there during those the peak of that. And um, I have a past life where I was in Japan during the time of the the last deluge. Well, it was a few deluges ago, but there was a whole very advanced society there that you know, again, we went through this pole shift and it was erased from underneath my nose. I remember literally watching the wave come and wipe everything out. Um, but we need to understand what we're preparing for. And the truth is, is that if they keep us in a state of of um, pain and in a, in a sense that we're being attacked all the time, then we are going to ignore what's happening with the physical planet. And we won't be ready. We won't be prepared for when the pole shift happens. And it's going to happen no later, no later than 2040. So we don't have a whole lot of time. And we need to be aware and ready and having educated our families and everyone. And the, the science is there. This is not mystical talk. I'm literally speaking in real measurable astrophysics, geology etc and we need to be ready for that shift because that shift is going to be the marker for the new age and that shift is going to basically sort us into who's who's going to be homo luminous and who's not who's going to change into the new species and who's going to get left behind or who's just going to check out and that's important go ahead sandy well you know i think that just goes back to what my team meaning my higher self, my, my larger Sandy, uh, that is innate within me says, stay away from all the distractions, look over there, look over there. And it has been driven home to me since 2019. Be careful of the distractions, focus on your inner dial. Where do you maneuver? How do you adapt? How do you pivot? Where are you supposed to flow to? Don't go with what everyone else is doing. Stop, drop, sit, connect with your breath, become aware. And then recently they gave me, instead of uh, 
they gave me um, your individual positioning system instead of your global positioning system. You don't know where you are globally until you work with the independent or the individual positioning system. And there's so much going on. You came here to do so many different things, but if you're so busy being distracted and it's all planted, it's planted to be distracted because everything you've learned has been outside of you instead of working at the internal software system. And you've got to work from the heart center. So thank you for, for pointing some of these, these very, very important things up. I've never been to Hawaii. I was touched by it, but I was also told not to take in too much of the information because being heavily empathic, no matter how much I tried to keep my vibration, it would be a weight that would distract me. But I am there in loving prayer for all, not just there. Yeah, I I agree with you. Like I said, there's certain people who are called to go hang out in hell, and others who whose precious and incredibly important job is to maintain that space of the of the pure, loving, prayerful, open heart space. The empath field is doing its job. All of the empaths that will listen to this, just know you don't have to bring this into your personal sphere. Let your outer field do the job. The outer field will pick all this stuff up and dissolve it and give it back to God. And that's what the outer field of the empath can do. You don't, you, you just have to give it permission to do that. And it will serve whomever is in suffering. Um, Maui's, Maui's obvious. There's many other Maui's that are not so obvious. And the, but the revealing, that's what apocalypse means. This is, this is that we're being, it's all being laid out for you, how all of this works and why it works that way. And what are they really after? They being our adversaries and who are these adversaries, etc. Again, that's not everybody's job. That's, that's people like me. I'm, I'm a seer. I'm supposed to see and know this stuff so that I can serve all of you better. And so that when you come and you bring your dark stuff to the table, that I'll be able to serve you with great awareness. And, and it doesn't necessarily bring up any trauma or triggers for myself in my service to you as a psychic seer and an oracle. It's important for you to be able to bring all the aspects of darkness and trauma to the table for its healing without it having triggering the person who's helping you heal and that's my job so i i'm not desensitized there's a difference i'm in complete knowledge and that's that's different than being desensitized so no you that's not the job all you have to do is do what sandy said go into the heart space and say who am i focus on that until december solstice Focus on who you are. And then the rest of it gets really clear. It gets clarified because that first dimension, that's literally the first dimension of consciousness is the I am present. And it is coming through the heart. And and if you understand who you are and you really perceive it, what you'll see, what you'll know, what you'll feel is how powerful your presence really is. That it goes way beyond this planet. It goes beyond this galaxy. Your presence is part of this universe, and it's that light is very real. It's the light of consciousness. That light goes all the way out to the edge. That's why when we say, you are the universe, I always tell people, the first dimension and the twelfth dimension are the same doorway seen from different sides. The twelfth dimension is source God. The first dimension is the I am presence. They are the same doorway that light is the same thing. And if you start to experience that through the heart space, your brain will catch up. <laughs> your brain's not supposed to make sense of this right away. Your body and your brain will change, will shift. And you'll know, I need to pray right now. I need to drum right now. I need to be still right now, or I need to take action now. And it has to be this action. And you'll know that divine knowing is a superpower of humanity. 
So that's that's part of the other good news is that that's all coming online as well. The second dimension of Indra's net is coming online fully. Everybody's getting way more psychic. Even the people who uh, long ago used to tell me, ah, no, that stuff's crazy. And now they're calling me up saying that now. Um, but when Indra's net comes online in its fullness, um, it will also and is connecting us to our galactic family as well. There's humans on hundreds and hundreds of planets all over our galaxy. Humanity is a galactic species. We have friends. Those are some of our allies. And they many of them are far more evolved than we are. And, and yet they also know this is up to us because the Homo sapiens, this is our planet, man. And that's why... You know, people have certain guides from certain places or past lives that really come into play with all of this. But they're, those guides, if they are not incarnate in a human body, then most of the time they're simply just giving you good advice and it's up to you to execute it because you're the Homo sapien living on Earth, which is ground zero for our galactic situation. So the Indra's net is the galactic collective too. We have access to everything they know and all the technology too. You'll start to see innovation occurring now too. For example, and this is only a big deal to people who, who care about this kind of stuff, but it's actually an incredibly big deal. And it's such a big deal that it's as if, the, what I'm gonna share with you now is a clue of how innovation is going to occur really, really rapidly now um, because of this new light. It's opening all this stuff up. It's revealing the truth. It's revealing our true war situation, which is a galactic level war. But it's also revealing um, incredible innovative technologies and skills. The first ambient temperature um, superconductor has been discovered. It's called LK99. The open source recipe for it brought out of South uh, Korea. Thank you, South Korea. But that's this is akin to discovering electricity. Like people don't realize everything's changing now. With with ambient temperature superconductors, we will never ever have to depend on coal or oil or wind or solar or anything like that ever again everything's completely changed if if we start to actually utilize this conductor as we have in the independent um, recreations of the experiments are working this is the beginning of a completely brand new era in technology and the everything that we've built up till now pales in comparison. We now have the ability to do, to understand how they would have built the pyramids, which are far older than 12,000 years, that's for sure. How do they do that? With this kind of tech, that's why you couldn't find it. There's there's no clues about where this technology is or, or what they were using to literally melt granite or levitate giant blocks into place. They were using this kind of stuff. And now we have it again. This is not an accident. This is part of getting that peak over to see the galactic light that literally pumps us full of power. Your human body's made for this. So that's another good news, that technology is on its way into realms that are actually gonna be powerful, healing, useful, and not hurting us. Us even being on these computers with the EMFs is hurting our bodies at this very moment. That whole era is over. So we shall see how this pans out. So, so you know, we keep an eye on the light. We keep an eye on the dark. We balance it out in our own lives. We keep asking ourselves, who am I in this situation? And when you get compelled through source to take action in a direction, Feel it from the heart and notice that push from your soul and how it feels different than your personal self or your ego or your trauma and keep going from there. Now, of course, I don't have any doubts that 
all of these things will come back around and not in the way that the elite thought the the eight eight energetics will not be what they thought it will actually come and absolutely destroy much of what they created this is the beginning of a huge set of dominoes falling not in their favor and so trust that trust that what will come back around to them is the the exact karmic creation they made and it won't be uh it won't be them taking Lahaina. They won't. They'll never succeed at it. They don't understand the spiritual dynamics there and who the ancestors are. The ancestors still walk the land. And now you have thousands of really powerful souls who, through sacrifice, have now entered into a realm. And like I said, I can't possibly imagine how the spiritual situation looks, but I can take a good guess. And anyone who's involved in uh, the harming of those people and the land will find themselves in a very terrible situation, spiritually especially. So understand these things, uh, especially the unseen, is going to pan out in big ways. About 10 years ago, I was I was on an island and we were in the AO Valley and there's this beautiful river and it's 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 the it's it, it what during a lot of a different conflict on island they said that it ran red with blood due to the conflict and and I saw this huge rock and I went and sat on it and I just I just sat on it and I just I was washed with all of the ancestry and it was, it was, it was so much that after about half hour, I had to, leave, I had to actually like leave AO Valley because I was just so overwhelmed and so dialed in with it. And it was just, it was so powerful. So just honoring what you said is, as the, if the ancestors do walk, they are protecting. I mean, this is, this is sacred land that they're, that they're trying to do X with. And it's, it's, it's powerful. It is. This now we're in the time of pure power. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Kelly, the magnifying. Ahead, you have something else. Go ahead. Yeah. Everybody go ahead. wants to talk. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say that I think you really pay attention to your inner dial and your inner your inner vocabulary on a level that's outside of a lot of the logic you'll know which direction to walk or be or stand or place yourself because there's an inner trusting there that you can't explain. And I think many people are going to be waking up to uh, my life isn't what I thought it was. And I don't feel the same about anything and I'm going to make changes, but they do it so easily that it's not like everything's taken from you in a disaster you just start saying, you know, and your path takes a different meaning. Everything has a different meaning. At least that's what I'm being, I get, I'm shown daily, but that's what I'm being shown right now as we're talking. It's that too. And also us sort of peeling back the layers of meaning, because one thing that's getting triggered in all of us across the board and I want to acknowledge this and, and tell people, how do you know the difference? How do you know if it's your stuff or genetic or past life, right? But past life stuff's getting triggered big time, yeah, and everybody, because people remember the wars. Um, and if you've been working on your personal stuff, personal stuff feels like it's coming from the mind, it's coming from inside of you, it comes from in you, and it lays itself out. That's your personal traumas, right? When we feel that trigger, it's usually right here. And then you have the genetic lineage. We're really lucky because our DNA is original, so there wasn't any memory in it when it was placed on our planet. And the that's precious. There was There's a whole purpose to that. Now, we were blocked from, through what's called the templates of wisdom, we were blocked from remembering our galactic history on purpose because actually ironically this was supposed to be a vacation planet 
<laughs> we were supposed to have a break from all this. And of course, that's not what, what ended up panning out. Um, but the the interesting part is that when you can feel then the 800,000 years that the Homo sapien has had to have these 66, 12,000 year cycles, there's a lot of trauma there. Um, also because we were set up in a, in a certain way to try to really work with the earth originally having been cut off from our galactic history and that's why for example like the very first human beings who were placed upon the melodic meridian there were many adams and eves not just one set of adam and adams and eves um thank but, you so much for telling me that the whole adam and eve story has always bothered me i'm just telling you okay i'm done <laughs> this is what's so this is so important because this is what's going to happen over the next couple of years so that's why I'm teaching about galactic history first so that when everybody starts remembering what's going on, they're not going to feel so nuts. Then you'll know, oh, this is part of a very, very long and dramatic and whew, juicy history. Um, but then the next year after that, 2024, as long as we have internet, I will be teaching about earth history and what happens from the beginning with human beings and what our real history is, and that's all coming out big time anyway. It's time for this. It's just perfect timing. I love it because I love I love awareness. You're just guided to do something, and then you see ten other people are doing it too, and you're like, great, excellent. That's my clue that we're on the right track. Um, and. So we'll, we will discuss these things of like how exactly all this panned out. What was really going on with the Garden of Eden? It wasn't a garden. It was an era. It was a 12,000 year period of time um, and, and more than that. But that interference, you know, we were blocked from our history because it was so painful. <laughs> the, the, the hope was that we would have these really nice fresh bodies without any galactic history in them and that we could incarnate in them without having to remember it. And boy, that was a bad decision in our experiment, the past 800,000 years. It was a terrible decision for us to block ourselves from our history. That's what the tree of knowledge was. It wasn't a tree, folks. It wasn't a tree. It was a history. And the apple, that was a download. That was a download. It was chosen by one of our adversaries, a Naga, a Naga who was a snake being from the draconian line, that Naga chose that particular piece of history and said, here, consume this. And what happened? The people that he chose to mess with, they started to remember the galactic history and a specific chunk was chosen, not the whole thing, to create shame. And so shame has been the energetic that has controlled our 800,000 years of being homo sapien here. And that shame has been weaponized against us, right? And now we're all over it. Now we're over it. Now we're working on ourselves, especially the women over these many decades, you know, um, and the women, what, what has happened? Well, we chipped away at our personal trauma. Then we started to feel the genetic trauma, which is 800,000 years of stuff. And that feels like an immense full body trauma. It doesn't just arrive, arise through the personal experience. It's a full body experience. So like the firebombing of Maui, that's triggering many things in all of us. Um, like for example, any, if you're a parent, um, the fear of losing our children in that horrific way, these kinds of things, very personal, but it also triggers genetic memory genetic memory of our ancestors who went through similar things too. And then when you start chipping away at that, you start to remember the galactic history because you're remembering your soul's history. Now your DNA has space to start to do what? Let your soul take over. And then your soul's memory shows up. And remembering your past lives is not easy. It's not pleasant. It is something you want to shoot for, but you got to be really strong and ready for it because remembering your galactic history is rough. Talk about 
uh, all of that magnified many, many, many times. And then in that memory, of course, then we actually start to recall who are we? Why? Why are they after us? Why are they after our bodies? Why are we at war at all? What is going on? Why? And then in that memory, you begin to remember your power, who you are why you why you were invited to be in the most powerful body in this area of the universe ever created and why you're a creator being and what you can actually do in the world being far more immense than you ever imagined and why you have all this support and guidance why you're here why you chose to be here at the end of the age of ages into coming into this completely new galactic age and why you're going to become a new species altogether and leave behind the era of homo sapien with great love but also with honestly you know good riddance <laughs> i just saw a mic drop just bam <laughs> <laughs> good riddance yeah it's been hard um... This has been hard, but I'm, I'm really glad that you're doing a course on galactic history as well as earth history. So I want to make sure I have those links in the description as For well. Sure. So people can, can look at that. I'm interested. I, I, I always get your emails about things going on and I've taken some of your courses, but I didn't realize you had galactic history in there. Yeah. So this past solstice, which was powerful for all of us. And anyone who's paying attention to even a grain of sand worth, Solstice opened up a whole other realm. And so I, as usual, I'll dive off the deep end of the edge and then I'll swim back and give a report. And that's usually what happens. So uh, Solstice, I did the same, you know, and, I, and I'm and i gung-ho about this. I'll go head first. Um, but Solstice, I, I could see, I went through a very personal experience, but basically I... The, the human body and my own body got laid out very clearly to me. All the things that I already knew, but it all got very well confirmed. That our physical form is actually a, a mashup of many dimensional forms, right? And 12 dimensions of form, um, sort of, kind of. Uh, a lot of this is very formless. And, and, I, and I don't want to uh, go in and, and say that these things are defined in the, in the new age at all these things are defined by a long lineage of discussion that comes from a tibetan lineage and goes far far back into the past from there the concept of 12 dimensions in consciousness is passed down from our galactic history so it's it's written in ancient text everything i teach is based off of either ancient text past life memories or comparing past life memories from other people because I'm an anthropologist. So I use ethnography to do meta study of what, who we are, what, what we're all about. That's my literal purpose in life. And I'm here for the humans. So that being said, um, alongside the galactic history, we're being asked to understand, you know, who are we from that perspective? Yeah. But what about these bodies? Because the galactic history, it's all about the body. It's all about the body and how amazing and miraculous these bodies really are and how the body was created, etc. So I'm also teaching another course. There are two parallel energies um, about the, the 12 light bodies. And I just did my intro class on Friday um, and I went for four and a half hours answering every single question in that chat to discuss this in full so people can understand how important this is. If you understand how your body works and who you really are fully from this perspective, then you will get all of your superpowers back online and you will be able to heal your trauma faster and you will be able to get some stuff done and help humanity heal and perhaps even stop some more Maui's from, from happening, right? I believe that. I believe it's up to us. We don't have to keep waiting for this to happen. Um, let's catch it before it does. Let's stop these things in their tracks. And then, of course, um, all of this will help us to manage not only the 
complete collapse of the systems of the matrix, which we're witnessing like the financial systems, et cetera. But we'll be able to not only manage, we're gonna thrive. We're gonna thrive beyond those systems. And furthermore, we're gonna innovate. And so in the innovation of the new, the Aquarian systems, the systems of the Sati Yuga, the systems of the golden age, the technologies of the golden age, that's all happening too. So if you're like, this sounds like crap and what the heck, all this suffering, this is terrible, I'm turning this off. Pause for a second and understand that I had to give you the bad news first <laughs> because the good news is extremely, incredibly powerful. And it actually helps to un help give us back our power so that we can stop more Maui's from happening the destruction of places like that because that's just one on many lists and you're witnessing um the complete cover-up of other maui's that have been occurring all over the world currently so it's not just maui um most people don't know this is happening in turkey it's been happening in greece it's been happening all over the world these firebombs this is a full-blown galactic level war it's a very unusual type of warfare and it seems like we're dealing with a David and Goliath, but my friends, the elite are already over. They've already lost. Why do you think they went after the kids? They've already lost. They felt they had no choice because we figured them out. And the sound of freedom really opened the doors for that. And they had to act really quickly to try to maintain their stranglehold that's why Maui happened in the timing that it did. So you can end these things. All of your superpowers, all of your skills can come back online. All of your memory, all of who you are from the beginning. It's, it's here now for you. But you need to know who you are. You need to know how your body works. So the 12 light bodies, that's another year-long process. We need to take our time with this stuff. We need to really understand it and embody it. Um, but that's, that's, what's getting laid out for the next year and how precious it is. Um, and I never do anything for an entire year. Um, but this was super key and very clear to me. Um, and I'm, I'm in it too. I'm with everybody. I'm in this discovery process too. My superpowers are coming back online too. And my traumas are getting laid out and same with my family. And, um, we need to be um fully embracing of our true selves there's so much hope there and i'm trying to kind of put it out energetically through my high heart because it's more than hope it's power it's just pure power um don't ever underestimate this you <laughs> our adversaries have nothing on us they never have otherwise they would have won their war long ago my friends they, they've been fighting against incredibly powerful beings and here they thought this was all going to go well for them especially on this planet and now homo sapiens are waking up they're real screwed now because now we're figuring out who we are it's it's not going to last hardly at all it's all going to end and and then they'll go down in flames because that's the karma they they created Mm. thank you elizabeth it's interesting if you when you play this back you should see when you were saying certain things how the light was hitting you it was it was really powerful and really beautiful to watch cool i uh it's funny how the light will get picked up and and it's it's just another example of how this stuff's really measurable it's very 3d the 3D's hooked into all of the other dimensions. Um, and and as we do this inner work, I mean, if anyone knows Kelly and Sandra at all from the past, look at how they've changed. If you, any of you have known me from early on, you know for sure how much I've changed. And when you look at the people doing that deep inner work and you start to get that feedback yourself, your friends and family will say the same they'll say that the that light is moving through you they'll perceive that more um 
And I think all three of us are a great example. So I encourage any of you that knows any of us, go back to how we used to look even just five years ago. And look at how different we are. Look how much more light comes through our bodies. That's that. That's why you got to deal with your trauma, folks. Because if you do that, you, you're free. You're free to actually remember and to stand in this and to become this. You are light. And the good news of wonderful news, and of course, grab Kelly's magazine because this next series or this next um, uh, publication is going to be all about the life after when we do walk out of these bodies. What happens? What happens? Well, my friends, the that's an incredibly powerful journey in of itself. And if you fully understand it, then you'll be free of the fear of death. And if you're free of the fear of death, that was the linchpin that kept you from remembering who you are. That's like pulling the rug out from underneath the matrix itself. And inside of you, all the changes you've been hoping for will unfold. You'll recreate your inner garden by removing the poison of the fear of death. Um, so get that magazine so that you can see for yourself from the many voices who will tell you the truth about who we are and that you are an immortal being. You're a being of light from the beginning of time. And to remember that is to reclaim who you are and then get some work done, right? <laughs> so we don't have to have any more uh, adversaries. We can have some peace finally. Yeah. And you know, the, the the powerful statement you just made about letting go of the fear of death is transforming. I remember after you and I started working together in 2016, I think around 2018, I was on an airplane ride. For some reason, it just came over me that, well, the plane goes down. I just go on to another journey. That's whatever I've left behind is just stuff. I don't have to worry about it. And it's such a liberating feeling that on a, such a deep cellular level, you could never really explain that to someone because we always hang on to our survival. Don't, don't, don't let me get hurt. Don't let me feel the pain. Don't let me suffer. And you don't want to see that with others as well. But once you understand that your life continues, um, even if you don't know what that looks like, it's just a feeling of knowing that you go on and that everything here, here you're just done with at that moment in time and all the journey that we're going on throughout these changes that you were just sharing, they're just a journey. And when it's our time to maybe be one of those that were in Maui and other places that have evaporated and left the planet, then we've done what we were supposed to do. And we've left the planet, right? But we've also left behind heart opening events that can help change and awaken others. So Elizabeth, I want to thank you so much for sharing your, so I, I could just sit here for hours. Like I don't need popcorn or anything. I just want to be like, Oh, I just, she just keeps going and going. I love my time with Kelly and I get my edge magazine every month and I've been on your Being Curious show, which I love. So I love all the work you're doing as well. So ladies, I just am in awe of both of you and honored to be sharing this screen with you. And uh, yeah, that just wells me up with tears, of te but tears of joy, tears of letting the, just a little bit of the pressure off the pressure cooker, knowing that there's more of us that are the steam, letting the steam kind of, kind of go and setting the example for others. We're not saying it's easy because we we were doing our work and we're teaching as we're doing our work, but we're not immune to the experiences. You know, it's hitting us hard too. Um, but together we can share, you know, ordinary people changing in extraordinary ways and our speed in which we're changing is now we're up in the game. The ceiling is being raised and there's more to do. Well said. Well said. 
the 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 last piece around the death that I might add is, you know, like like the events of Maui, these these kinds of tragic deaths make a huge wave in consciousness, and then just compound it, magnify it for simply the fact that it happened on a on Maui itself, which is a giant magnifying powerhouse of of pure energy and power. Um, but more so, don't forget the power of conscious death, right? So in order to make waves in consciousness, we don't necessarily have to go out in flames or go out fighting, um, though that does make impact when we do decide to, or when it's time for us in the divine timing to step out of these physical experiences and back up into source. Um, if you can do that consciously, it, and you you could be doing it very quietly, perhaps, um, conscious death can actually counter and create great healing for the traumas of death and the tragedies of sudden and um, murderous death that have that happen on this earth all too often. So we're that's one of the, the human superpowers is to be able to go through a conscious death. And where I'm living, um, there's a very powerful community of elders here, all extern heroes. Um, and these elders, I'm watching them very slowly, um, one by one, consciously leave. And when I first moved here, I said to all of them, they got to know me and I created a reputation here, um, being in service. And um, they, many of them actually remembered me from past lives and things like that but they were asking me you know why did you move here exactly and I said I think there's many reasons but one of them is that I'm here to to take the batons of the those generations of the people in their 60s 70s and 80s who who are finish finishing up their lives and I said I'm here to sit with you I'm here to absorb your knowledge and your wisdom I'm here to take the baton of wisdom that you have and then carry it through to over this threshold of the shift, the pull shift to offer it to my built-in lineage, which is my children and anyone else who wants to learn this stuff. So, so, so we all have different roles in the different timing, but the, those elders, they're consciously checking out and that conscious checking out, in incredible acts of divine timing. I have really amazing stories of these beautiful friends of mine and their death and what has occurred in the miracles of their death. And having that memory too, I get to carry that memory with me as well on behalf of all of us. But conscious death, it's like, it's like saying of all the million people in the past year who've died unexpectedly in tragic ways, uh, there might be a million people who have gone through these really tragic sudden deaths, right? That make a terrible mark on co uh, the collective consciousness. One person, one person consciously dying helps undo the tragedy of that. Don't underestimate your personal experience and how much it affects reality my friends and don't think that these folks are just gone they have now turned into their true selves and they will they will be helping all of us out don't underestimate how the hawaiian for example their lineages are stepping up and what's going to happen from there is quite the spiritual event so the that's something that's very true that i've discovered over even the past few years conscious death um recognizing that threshold taking it willingly with all of your heart and body and soul um that acts as a huge bomb on the tragedies of sudden death um and we're in a world of imbalance it's much much darker than it's ever been before in any of the other times of darkness on this planet much much darker so um we've we've got our work cut out for us but 
that pendulum is now swinging full force to balance the light. And this discussion is a good example. It will act mm -hmm. as a pivot point and it acts as a wave out in consciousness, which will then even um, activate, turn some people on, get their heart fields really going so that they understand for themselves the bigger picture. And now everybody knows what the bad and the good news is and that the good news far outweighs all the bad um, in many, many ways. So this is a very special time. And thank you very much, Sandy of course, for your heart space and creating that. Thank you for joining me. Kelly, come on. I know you got something else you want to share. I just, I just want to say mahalo. That's mm -hmm. just, thank you for everything. This has been beautiful. We need to do this at least once a quarter. This is just amazing. I Agreed. love sharing yeah. space with you I too. Agree. I agree. It's really, uh, Open my heart center up here a lot today, just with gratitude, just so much gratitude, just it oozes out. And at some point it has to be a tear and the tear is not sadness. It's just such deep gratitude for you beautiful, strong, amazing women that I have healthy relationships with. And I just, even though I can't come over to your house and have a cup of coffee or even though I don't drink the stuff, but <laughs> I just, I feel like we're neighbors. We, we just come together and it's just like, you're just right down the street or next door in the other room. And I'm very grateful to that. So thank you, ladies. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anybody have anything else to share? And of course, stay put before we end. Elizabeth, Kelly, anything else? All just right. Thank you for today. Um, go ahead, Kelly. Just thank you. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait for your next. I can't wait for your next um, magazine to come out, Kelly. So I'm really excited for that. And of course, I agree. We should. This can be such a great act of service when we get together and share what's happening. And um, um, but uh, the only thing I would just add for people is, um, it's all about the skills now. <laughs> so it's in the. What comes of all of this inner work is all of your tools, all your skills, all the cool stuff that you brought to the experiment of consciousness on our beautiful earth. And that's why you're here. You were these evolutionary moments. And as hard and tough and as unusual as they might seem, or mind-blowing and you can have that in your lifetime that's what's happening so we have this shift coming up real fast here within the next 10 to 15 years and what that looks like um is a little hard to imagine but understanding that you're here and you have your inner compass like sandy said it's you it's your soul know that that is all you need to listen to to make those next steps and that it's up to you to make the first step and anyone else who then trusts you they'll take that they'll find source in themselves guiding them to whatever the next step is too we can't take everybody with us not everybody's going to believe what we say but be willing to stand in the truth and um eventually you'll just be so pure in it that People, although they might feel perturbed, they're going to be really compelled to hear you out. <laughs> I've discovered that. So, um, And if the science piece is important to you, look at that carefully because it's very exciting what's happening there too. Um, not just the spiritual part, but be conscious that all of this is measurable and that what, what you're seeing play out in the 3D is not just happening out of nowhere. It's part of a very specific set of changes. Um, so trust, trust yourself. Trust yourself, my friends. Trust your families. Trust your friends that you've brought your, yourself into connection with. You know, Sandy and I have known each other a long time. Kelly and I are new friends. 
But the minute we met, we were like, oh yeah, I know you. <laughs> uh, but that's that's how I would end this right now is just simply saying that. Thank you. All right, ladies, stay put, but say goodbye to everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Roll. <laughs>